Hi Tom, thank you for joining me today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about your involvement praying outside abortion centres and particularly with 40 Days for Life. And I thought to start with it might be helpful maybe if you just share a little bit about yourself. Yeah, of course. Um, so obviously, my name's Tom Taylor, I'm 23 years old. Uh, recently graduated with a Master's in Historic Conservation. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, what we do and, and part of the campaign is really important. Um, and I just want to help where I can. So. And have you always been pro-life? Um, yeah, I would say that generally I've, I've been, um, you know, I was brought up Anglican, um, so the sanctity of life was important. Um, however, I only really started to openly be pro-life from about 2017. Um, I did an uh, a, A-level in politics, um, and that's where I first came across this question. Um, and at first I was, you know, kind of taken aback by it. I didn't really want to say much uh, about the issue. I didn't want to put my, you know, foot in the ring kind of thing. But then after a uh, time of, like, prayer and and research, I actually came to understanding that, no, this is a human life, and actually it's a human rights issue that we should be talking about more in our society. And that's when I started, um, I went to the March for Life campaign in Birmingham in 2017, um, and then started to go to SPUC conferences, um, and then initially ended up helping with the 40 Days for Life in Birmingham. That, that would be considered quite a radical thing for a lot of people to go outside an abortion centre. What, what made you actually take that step, you know, in, rather than any other pro-life work that you could have done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was quite difficult at first. Um, I think for a lot of young people, the young pro-life people, it starts off on social media or with family and friends, you start having these discussions. Um, and that can get quite depressing. It can get disheartening because it's quite difficult to get through to people. Um, and some of the, the debates and discussions you have can be quite volatile. Um, but then I helped a little bit in, in York outside the, the BPAS clinic there. Um, and being amongst people of a similar mindset and actually being able to be a public witness and help um, made a big difference. And, it, you know, I felt that this was a calling in a way for all, for all Christians and for all people to stand up for such an important issue in, in our society. Um, and that's when I got in touch with yourself, Isabel. Um, and from there, just it just went, you know, and I was in God's hands and it, it just it fit and it, every every time I stand outside the clinic um, it, I feel a sense of you know not my will but yours in a sense you know from a Christian understanding um, and actually helping is a really important part. And what do you actually do when you're there Tom for people who maybe you know this is something that they've read about and have got different ideas about what people do outside the abortion centre what what do you do when you're there yeah so um the 40 days for life campaign consists of um 12 hours in the day of praying from eight till eight usually um and there's no more than there's around two to three people outside the clinic um and usually in hour slots um and we just we're there to pray and offer public witness prior quietly um and you know, and also when we're outside the clinic, we offer um, women a leaflet for those going in uh, with just some information and some helplines. Um, and within that, when we offer them a leaflet, we offer them the chance to have a conversation with us. Um, and often that's fruitful. I think um, the campaign has saved over 100, 100 unborn children's lives and the women have taken, continued the pregnancy and are now um, unhappy with their decision and their baby. So it's really fruitful in that regard. What, what would you say was the um, maybe the, the biggest resistance that you felt or any obstacles that you felt getting involved? What, was there any sort of hesitancy on your part? Because mm. I can imagine for a lot of people there might, I don't know, whether it's fear or just finding the time, you know, was there anything for you that, that was a difficulty to actually maybe hold you back to start with? Yeah, I think, well, as, as I said before, I think being a young pro-life person is quite difficult in the sense that you get a lot of backlash from your peers, um, from your friends, and even your family, really. Um, even though my family are, are Christian, it's a very mixed bag on, on, on this issue. Um, I was quite fortunate, fortunate in the sense that when I started with the 40 Days for Life, it was um, after the, the COVID pandemic. So actually, we, the first campaign I was involved with, we were actually in the church praying. Um, and it eased me into into what the 40 Days for Life campaign was and, and helped me kind of gain confidence before I was able to stand outside and, and offer help 
and um, speak on this issue. Um, but the biggest challenge I felt was praying with another person. I know that might sound strange, but um, actually being able to understand other people's comfortability. Um, you know, not everyone wants to pray the same things. Often I, with my prayer partners, we pray the rosary, but it can vary. You know, sometimes it's just involuntary prayer or silent prayer um, and knowing where people are in their journey with God or just, you know, in, in their own spiritual lives. It's, it's, I found that quite challenging. Um, and also not wanting to get it wrong, even though, you know, no prayer is wrong. So It's funny, actually, a lot of people have shared that with me, saying maybe particularly praying in public is something that they've never done, even if it was just silently praying, but just the fact that other people know that you're standing there as a prayer witness. Um, sometimes it takes you out of your comfort zone, doesn't it? And I think for a lot of people, it's just making that first step that I'm going to do it anyway. Um, before it gets any easier, you have to kind of make that initial Slightly uncomfortable step. <laughs> um, and what about blessings then, Tom? Have you got any, any lessons that you've learned or any blessings that you've gained from, from doing what you do? Yeah, I mean, as I said, you know, moving from social media and from family discussions to actually being a prophetic witness outside the clinic um, has been a huge blessing and has made me more thoughtful and more focused on the individuals and on the persons that are involved um, rather than just on the, the wider issue itself. Because I'm quite um, an intellectual person, um, for want of a better word. You know, I'm quite theologically minded and scientifically minded. So I approach things in quite a black and white way. And people aren't black and white. You know, people are dealing with different things all the time. They, they come through different circumstances. And actually, that's an important um, learning curve for me to actually approach this in a human, compassionate way. Yeah, that, that really resonates with me, what you've just said. I know for myself going there, it really helped to make the issue very real. You know, you, it gave you a much deeper understanding of the, the very wide variety of personal situations that, you know, can be involved in, in, in something like this. You know, um, you realise, like you say, that people aren't just black and white. There's so many different reasons why somebody might be considering an abortion, so many different people. It's certainly not one group or one class or anything like that, is it? It's, it's an issue that affects everybody. And I think until you go there, you don't really kind of maybe appreciate that that much. Um, I, I know some people might think that for someone like yourself, um, particularly being a young person, but also maybe being a man going outside an abortion centre, that some people would even consider that to be inappropriate. Has that ever been sort of um, thrown your way or is that something you've ever had to face, you know, as a man? Is this an issue that you should be getting involved in? Mm, it's interesting you should say that. I've been quite fortunate um, within my short time as a public pro-life um, witness. I think generally a lot of people haven't, you know, said the no uterus, no opinion to me or had this kind of wall against me for being a man. Um, for me, I've never had felt that contradiction or, or conflict because for me it is a human rights issue. Um, and fundamentally you know, being able to stand up and support those that need it. I think, you know, you don't need to be of a certain age, gender, um, religion to do that because at the end of the day, we're all human. And it, I, you know, often you hear people say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm personally pro-life. You know, I would never have an abortion myself, but I can't stop other people. You know, and, and for a moment in my life, I was like that, you know, before I, before I did um, A-levels. And that kind of stuck with me because I felt, well, if I wouldn't put myself through this or my family members, why am I allowing someone else to go through that? And although as a man, I will never, you know, know what it is to go through this or, or be in a situation where I am pregnant and alone, I wouldn't want someone else to go through that. So that's why I'm happy to stand up as a man and as a pro-life man. And I know before we, we started recording, you were sharing with me something about, um, I think you said that there's, there's nothing easier than being a oh, pro-choice yeah. man. Um, and, and I think that's a really true statement, isn't it? That, that it's actually the pro-choice men that are, that are getting off very easily um, and, and leaving women in very difficult situations sometimes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, when you consider the fact that when there is a crisis pregnancy, men can just walk away. Um, and often, or on the worst scenario, they often force their wives or girlfriends to actually go for it because it's easier for them. They don't want to be a father. And the sad fact is that they already are. 
Um, but women can't just walk away. They have to make a direct decision. And the law at the moment allows them to either to go through this procedure, which is horrific and traumatic for them, um, and they have to you know, work for that for years to come, or they make a stand and they stand up as a mother in society, which is not easy today, um, especially when if family and friends aren't supporting you. Um, so, yeah, I think there is nothing easier than being a pro-choice man, I'm afraid. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, with you on that. And it's, and it's lovely to meet, that's one of the blessings of the campaign for me, is to meet so many really good pro-life guys who are actually there because they care about women, you know, not to do with getting anything for themselves, but just because they genuinely care about women in, in whatever situations those women might be in. There's been quite a lot of talk recently, Tom, about buffer zones, and I'm sure you've, you've heard that. Um, is that something that concerns you? What are your thoughts about buffer zones, whether it's um, ones that are being introduced locally by councils um, through these public space protection orders that are happening, or whether it's it's a national um, implementation. What what are your concerns, if you've got any? Yeah, I'm deeply concerned about this, Isabel. Um, partly because what we offer as part of the 40 Days for Life and other pro-life groups that do this is being able to meet people where they are, and especially women where they are, because you know they might not have anyone in their lives that is actually standing up and saying, look, you can continue with this pregnancy, you can be a mother and you can, you can do this. Um, and often being that friendly smile or that, that leaflet can actually help, you know, and, and if they don't have us there to just offer that support, they might not know it's there. Um, and the issue I find with the, these buffer zones is that, especially since the pills by post has come into, into force, um, women need us more than ever because those that are actually going to the clinic are those that who might actually have these doubts and concerns themselves. Those that actually do want to go in for that counselling that they might not need, you know, legally they don't have to have, they can do it over the phone or online, but they, they just want to speak to someone personal and they won't get that from the clinic. They won't get impartiality. They won't get kind of this other side, this chance. Um, so I think it's really important that we are being there physically for them. Um, and also as a Christian, I think prayer is more efficacious when you are nearby. You know, I know that God's grace and, and God can work outside of, of human fault, but actually being there is really important. What, what about those that maybe would be concerned that it could be seen as intimidating or, or harassing? Um, is, is that something that you've had to answer yourself? Yeah, I think, you know, when, when you first say to people, friends or family or even the, the local neighbourhood and you say what you're doing and people say, oh, but that's, you know, you're making people feel uncomfortable. Um, and I would say that firstly, we're not there to judge. We're not there to intimidate. We're just praying quietly and peacefully and offering, as I say, a friendly smile. I think that's so important in what we do um, and offering them that chance and that those information. Um, so, no, I, I, <laughs> I've never seen anyone, you know, on in part of the campaign has ever been um, intimidating or harassed anyone and actually we find that the majority of the issues that come are when the local um, neighbours get involved and they start having quite volatile conversations with us and then pushing women away and making them feel uncomfortable um, so no I, I, I don't think that you know what, I, what we do is, is harassment or intimidation. Yeah, I, I would definitely second that. I know it's quite ironic sometimes that <clears throat> it's very, very rarely that I have a difficult conversation with somebody using the abortion centre <clears throat> and quite frequently that a local resident will come past, maybe thinking that they're sticking up for people who are using the abortion centre, but in actual fact getting very, very aggressive and, and creating a scene, whereas before it was very peaceful and, and not bothering anybody. Um, so yeah, it can be a bit ironic. Yeah, definitely. And I think another thing to point to add is the fact that, you know, this isn't an us and them scenario. It isn't, you know, the, the pro-life people versus the neighbours. Um, I've had many people pass by and thank us for what we're doing. Um, and the last campaign we had uh, in Birmingham prior to the uh, PSPO in force, um, there was a, ma a man and his son um, who had Down syndrome and they were just so pleased to see us there um, and came down and said thank you. And, and that really lifted our hearts and our spirits in that moment because I think it was quite... A, quite a wet day that day so we really needed it so yeah I, I, I know for myself as well I've had um, locals coming out offering to make me a cup of tea um, you know saying if you want to come and you know use my bathroom or just yeah. just really trying to be neighborly and hospitable it's just sometimes you get the few who are more vociferous um, who, who, who 
maybe have got um, misapprehensions about us or have come to the wrong conclusion mm. about, about what we're doing or, or maybe just even hurt themselves. Mm. And, and that's often the case, isn't it, with this issue that sometimes people are carrying hurts and it can, can come out sideways as anger. Yeah. Um, and that's what we see. And that's another part of what we do as well. It's not just offering help for the women and the unborn lives in that moment. It is after abortions. It is after the pregnancy. You know, we are there from, you know, life from conception until natural death. So we're there for all people affected by abortion. Um, and, you know, there's Rachel's Vineyard, which we work with um, um, compassionately, and, and they offer, you know, retreats and, and counselling for those that have gone for abortion. I think that's really important as well. So true. I'm really, really glad you brought that up. What would you say then, Tom, to somebody who's thinking, yeah, this is something that I might want to get involved with, you know, any any words of encouragement or advice for them? Yeah, well, first, I'd say definitely, definitely get involved. Um, you know, this is a, a number one human rights issue that we're dealing with. If we can't protect um, the most vulnerable in our society, which is the unborn, then all human rights fall apart at that point. Um, I think the easiest way to get involved is to find someone who is perhaps involved themselves. Um, come to some of the kickoff events um, that I know that the 40 Days for Life do across the country. Um, get involved that way. Find someone who is perhaps on your wavelength in terms of prayer. You know, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be a Catholic to be a part of this. Um, you can offer prayer or thoughts in different ways. So find someone that you're comfortable doing that with. Um, and just put your name out there. You know, you might go to a kickoff event and say, oh, that year I'm not, I can't, you know, I can't do it, or that, that cap campaign, I can't do it. But then the next campaign, you might say, oh, I'll offer, you know, an hour a week, or I'll just, I'll offer myself when there isn't, you know, when there's a slot or something going, and then slowly build your way up that way. I think that that's, that's the best way. Brilliant. Yeah, well, I'm so glad you've got involved. I know you've been an absolute blessing to our campaign. So thank you, Tom. Um, and, and thank you very much for, for joining us, wherever you're from. Um, an encouragement to you that if you do want to get involved, then please don't keep just thinking about it, actually do it. As Tom was saying, um, in Birmingham, where, where he helps, we know well over 100 women who've managed to continue their pregnancy because there was somebody there to offer them an alternative. And maybe that person could be you.